Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Hello, are you asking any question? Yes, um, it's totally unrelated to project management, but I just want to get something right, sir. Okay. With this um, business analysis, does one need to have an MBA after this business analysis, sir? Or does not need at all? Yeah, business analysis, uh, you don't need to have MBA. You, you, you don't need to um, have, uh, all you need is just to, to be a graduate. Even if you are not a graduate, even if you hold a diploma, you can, after getting the skill, decide to do a certification course, you know, okay. to help you. But if you are a graduate and you are, you, with this course, this program, what the companies are looking for is the experience you have as a business analyst, the skills you have. How can you demonstrate that um, you know this? And that's why we are going to have uh, this internship where you develop this uh, practical experience of a business as a business analyst. And okay. at the end of the internship, if you're applying for a job and companies are asking for reference, where have you done uh, any job related to business analysis, we can provide reference for you. Okay, sir. So that's what we are doing. We have a lot of startups where we can, we are going to be assigned to do a business um, analysis or project management internship or work experience where you um, deliver a project just like I stated there in the course. And after then, we'll back you up uh, with references that you work with us because you, you've done it practically. You've got the commercial experience. So, and that's what the companies are looking for. But okay. if you want a situation where you want more backup uh, with your skills, you can take a certification exam, all these globally um, renowned, um, a non certification exam, like you can take um, a certification, um, um, like um, product owner certification, scrum master certification. Some of these for certification will help you to boost you um, as a business analyst or as a project manager. But I've taken all those certification, but they never asked me about it since I started working. They never asked me about my certification. The only thing they asked me about my commercial experience, what have you done? Where have you worked as a business analyst or as a project manager? You tell them the company, you tell what, you, you, then you say the, the, the rule or the, the kind of projects you delivered. What, what role did you play in that project? How did you do it? That's okay, what they want sir. to hear. They don't want to okay. know. I want to let them know that I have even master's. But they don't care about my masters. No. Okay, sir. So that's why I don't um, want uh, my trainees to be so much about certificate or certificate. Try to learn, learn it as a skill, learn it as a trade, know it, because that is okay. what they want. And if you've known it and with uh, work experience back up, you don't have any problem. To secure a job. All right, sir. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Yeah. I understand better now. Okay. So what we we are going to do today is uh, we'll continue uh, from where we stopped yesterday. Yeah, um, this is what we are meant to start doing. We're meant to start uh, project management techniques um, today, but we ventured into it yesterday because we we'll have some time. So, and I wanted you people to start the assignment. So, but today we are starting from here again. We we'll just uh, have a brush, brush up uh, the one we did yesterday, and then we'll continue. So 
what we are going to do today is a project management techniques and these are the major techniques you need to uh, capture as a project manager if you can capture these techniques it will help you so much um, to deliver your project very well in project management we have a, a lot of techniques so but, but why is it good to capture the major one is that if if, if you are not well uh, if you are not properly guided about the major ones you might dive into even the the ones that are no longer relevant they are no longer in the market you can just might just be learning a lot of them taking your time which i don't think is necessary i don't want anybody to waste don't want to waste your time looking at only if you are if you want to go into research but if you can master this um this uh five techniques here you can um kick start very well but they are work grade down structure critical path method or critical path analysis gun charts agile scrum and kanban so yesterday we treated work breakdown structure where i told you that work breakdown structure is a breaking down your work into um categories or phases and into smaller phases or into smaller categories you keep breaking them down from high level to low level and so that this will help you to to plan your work very well, know where you are focusing and not getting confused. For instance, initi initiation stage is a high level, is a phase, is a, is a lump, lump chop of um, uh, activity. But in a work breakdown structure, you can break it down into smaller phases or into smaller subcategories or into um low level uh categories from high level to low level like planning as well execution control and closure they are high levels they are all high level phases of a project so you need to break them down into smaller molecules so that you can manage them very well and know what you are doing at any point in time and when you break them down like this, then you assign a period of time that this one is going to take. And assigning a period of time to every of these uh, low level um, subcategory of the, this uh, phase will help you to know your timeline. No time will take you to deliver um, any piece of uh, deliverable or tax. I can equally help you to assign this particular task to a, a particular project team member. And then you monitor, if you like have a, like a four team members, you can decide to assign one particular deliverable to a particular team member. This will help you to manage and then track your deliverable very well. Equally help you to know the cost, what is going to cost you to deliver any of these um, uh, smaller deliverables. So that's why it's good to break them down so that you can assign it to individuals, uh, mem uh, project members, assign cost to each of them, uh, assign time uh, duration, timeline to each of them. And if there is dependencies, it will equally help you to manage the dependencies between each of these uh, deliverables very well. And then know when you arrive at your milestone. So that's why it's good to break it down now. Once you break it down now, you know what you are doing at any point in time. You know who is doing who and uh, who is not doing who. To help you to then apply even your recent metrics know who is are responsible for any um deliverable who is accountable who is to be consulted and who should be informed 
So this is uh, the importance of uh, breaking your work down. So it's, it's already, you guys already working on it. That's your assignment. So I just decided to throw more light on it. So then what we are going to do now is to move to the next uh, stage, which is um, a critical path method. Critical path method is a, a project management technique as well. Is a kind of um, breakdown structure, but is more detailed. It's a more detailed uh, breakdown structure. Uh, critical path is a method for modeling projects where you impute all necessary factors involved in your project and output the optimal timeline for completing it. Factors for input in your model include. Uh, timeline, uh, that is time estimates, tax dependencies, milestone, or deliverable, deadline set by clients or um, stakeholders. So this is critical method. You can see here it helps you now um, uh, clearly state your tasks, duration, Unlike the uh, normal uh, work breakdown structure, this is uh, more detailed. Now you, you are seeing here, it's showing the, 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 the time period is going to take you to deliver a particular deliverable. And then you can see it comes with um, a GAM chart as well, where it's showing, um, the bar here, they, they help you to see how your work is progressing using a bar chart, um, gun chart. But the major important thing is here is that it helps you to look at your work critically. It help you to track your your timeline, your your dependencies, your milestone and deadlines. Under this uh, installation, you can see these are the um, sub -de um, uh, deliverables under this installation. You can see uh, the timeline here under obtain PO and other server, you can see it's three days. Under setup server and uh, lead OS is four days load and configure software four days perform server threat test two days installation completion yeah that should be a um your milestone so this is how you see it so you know your critical parts all the critical parts in this area which is this time lines these are critical parts because you know once you you have a three days to do this, it's very critical because if you miss these three days, you know that you are stepping into another deliverables timeline, which is not good for you. So this helps you to manage that's called it critical path method or critical path analysis. So you know how many days it will take you to do this. This is critical. Now to do the installation, that is 20 days. If you are taking, if it's taking you 22 days or 21 days to do this, you know you are moving out of your timeline. And this um, software will remind you that you are getting close to your critical path, which is this uh, completion day. So once you are getting close to 20 days and you are not, you've not finished, the critical, the, the software will let you know that you are approaching your critical moment. So this is why it's important to, to, to do this critical path analysis. And to do this critical path, we use uh, tools like Microsoft Project or uh, Project Labor to do this. So 
In other words, this is a project plan. This is a project plan. So this is another way, for, another name for this critical part. It's a project plan. So for this particular project, which is implementing uh, Budget Pro, this is the budget, this is the, the project plan. And is uh, called the critical path method. <clears throat> this is going to be your, um, your second assignment. So, because it's very important as a project manager, you must be able to know how to plan to do your, your, your project plan. You must have, know how to plan your project. So, and the only way to do it is using this critical path method. So, um, work breakdown structure will help you to break your, your work down, but critical path with this will help you to look into, start planning your project, assigning duration, a time period on your, on your, deliver, on your tasks and deliverables, your activities. Assigning um, uh, resources. When we talk about resources, we talk about uh, personnel, people that will do the job. These are the resources and uh, cost. What? How much is going to cost to to do any to to undertake any activity or deliverable? So this is it. You can see here we have um, installation, testing training, uh, yeah, installation, testing, and training. So this is the project plan for this uh, Implement Budget Pro. So this, um, to do this assignment, we are going to use, uh, I know, um, Microsoft Project is, is a paid software. So some of you might not have it or might not have the money to go and start uh, buying it or subscribing for it. But there is a free, a free version, just like a Microsoft Project as a project labor, uh, is a new, is a clone of a Microsoft Project and it's very good. And uh, that's what I've been using to teach my students because so many of them might not have the money to start um, uh, buying a Microsoft uh, projects to install and start doing the assignment. So if you, um, I will let you know how to, where to get a download project labor on your system and uh, start using it to create this uh, critical path method and uh, your project plan. That's going to be the assignment. But I will send you a document of the, the assignment, how you are going to go about starting doing the assignment. And um, some videos you need to watch to get you started. And after the assignment, I'll see how far you've gone. And then we can then have a session to do correction where some of you are struggling. Any question on this? Okay. Now we've seen how the critical path method uh, looks and how it works. We are going to look at um, Gantt chart. Gantt chart is a tool for planning and scheduling of projects. Timeline and tasks are converted into horizontal bar chart, showing start and end dates, dependencies, scheduling and deadline. How much of uh, the task is completed 
a stage and who is the tax owner. This is useful for tracking a large team and stakeholders when the scope changes. So, so that is a, this is the critical, in this particular project, this is the critical part. And here is the gun chart. So gun chart works hand in hand most of the time with critical, uh, critical uh, part uh, analysis or the project, um, project plan. But the, the importance of gun chart is to show uh, a visual picture of how the project is moving, the dependencies. So as you can see here, you can see the picture, these are gun charts, you can see how long it takes to do any particular work and the dependencies. So this is gun chart. It, this you can all this um, um, software is uh, they are all incorporated in one. Uh, all this method is incorporated in one software, which is this uh, uh, pri, um, Microsoft Project or Project Labor. So you can use this to do the whole thing. And once you are creating a project like this, uh, creating your critical parts the gun chart will automatically start showing. So you don't need to create gun chart separately. So you can gun chart and critical parts, they work together. But this one um, is more of showing the text, but this more show using a, a bar chart to show the, the representation of the project visually. So that is what the the bar chart is doing, but it's the same information. Both of them have the same information, but they are presenting the information in different manner. That's the only difference between Gantt chart and critical parts. So once you start using this uh, Microsoft project or project labor, you start seeing how to, to do it. Then the next thing we are going to look into is um, Scrum. Scrum is very, very popular in agile project management. Actually, Scrum is agile itself. There is no agile, there is no agile project management without Scrum. So we call it agile Scrum. Scrum is a framework within which people can address complex problems through productively and creatively delivering projects of the highest uh, possible value. In Scrum, we have um, some um, rules like a Scrum master, a product owner, and the project uh, team. The Scrum Master foster an environment. The Scrum Master makes sure that everything um, works very well. The Scrum Master removes the, the impediment. Uh, the Scrum, when you come to Scrum, there is no project manager in Scrum. So the Scrum Master here serves as a project manager. So he makes sure that the, the project uh, it's, it's been delivered on time and on budget, and uh, he removes any kind of blocker, any kind of issue, any kind of problem, any kind of risk. Mm -hmm. It's the duty of the Scrum Master to make sure that all those things are being uh, addressed and that the project team are having a smooth operation, delivering the, 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 the sprint which they are meant to be delivered. So the Scrum Master first foster an environment for the project to, to be delivered uh, successfully. 
a project owner orders the work for complex for for a complex problem into a product backlog the product owner is the person that owns that particular uh, project in um, that particular product in a uh, screw the product owner collects the requirements from the client the 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 customer or the stakeholder he compiles all the requirements into a backlog called, called a product backlog product backlog is a requirement is, collect, is a collection of requirements collected by the the product owner and then the product owner will then um, assemble the scrum team with the scrum master to deliver to, to let them know uh, the product they, they, they mean to be delivered and the product team uh, the, the scrum team is made up of the scrum master the product owner and the developers the developers then work on the on the product a backlog and then deliver uh, a piece of software which is a feature uh, within the, the 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 product so the the the, the scrum team turn a selection of the work into an increment of value during a sprint the scrum team and each stakeholder inspect the result and adjust for the next sprint. So how it works is that looking at this diagram here, this is the, the product owner. The product owner collects the input from the end user, the customer, the team and the other stakeholders. And after collecting the requirements, the product owner compile the requirements into a product backlog, which is uh, the features. And then you assemble the team here. This is the, 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 the project team or the scrum team. And then they have a session on these features. They groom the features with the developers. And uh, that is what we call sprint meeting. After the sprint meeting, they select the features they need to develop from the list of backlogs. And then they start working on the uh, backlog. The backlog, uh, the, the backlog they, they selected here will become the, the user stories. Then they will work on this user story they selected and then develop a piece of software. And after developing a piece of software, they will then invite the stakeholder to demonstrate what they've done. And most of the time, it takes them between one to uh, four weeks, that is a month, to develop uh, a piece of software. And once they develop that piece of software within that one month, that software can be deployed to be added to the main product or to be kept to be added later. So that is uh, how you use Chrome in um, a project life cycle. So these are the major things we are going to be doing as a uh, project managers and the business analysis in IT projects. That's going to be the major thing we are going to be doing. So if you are planning to be um, a business analyst or project, uh, project manager within agile project management, this is the main thing. So we are going to be spending a lot of time trying to understand how this process works, how to, to gather 
this um, backlog, how to to refine the backlog through um, product backlog uh, refinement, how to select a sprint backlog from this uh, uh, product backlog, and how to create a piece of software from this uh, sprint backlog, and then how to demonstrate what we've created to the, the um, to the stakeholders, and then so many events that takes place within this period, which is sprint um, planning meeting, daily stand up, uh, sprint uh, demo demonstration, uh, sprint re retrospective. These are the things we need to understand very well. During the time of development, during the time of this uh, um, one to four weeks development, where the developers are working on the software to develop a piece of software, there is a way to work to make sure that uh, we meet our timeline, our objective, and uh, within our budget. And one of them is called the daily standoff. Daily standoff is that every day, every member of the Scrum team must uh, come to a meeting to tell the team what he or she did yesterday, what he's planning to do uh, today, and all the necessary challenges or problem he has been facing so that it can be addressed as a team. That is what we call the daily standoff. So it helps the team to make sure that they checkmate all the risk arising. So when you're having daily meeting, where everybody is now talking about their challenges, it will help you, the team, to make sure that they are proactive, reacting to any kind of um, changes or any kind of risk arising. That is the important. That is a, a principle in Scrum. It's not uh, obtainable in other uh, project management methodology, but it's in, um, one of the very big, uh, great feature in in um, in uh, Scrum. Although most of the people working with Scrum, the Scrum, they find it difficult to be having meeting every day to say, but that is the best practice in doing this. And if you are not doing it, then you are not practicing Scrum. If you are not having a daily meeting where you collaborate with your team to talk about what you've done, what you are planning to do, and your challenges on daily basis, then what you are not, what you are doing is not Scrum. Then after that, when a piece of software has been developed and tested within the team, then the team we invite developers, we, we invite the, uh, the stakeholders to look at what they've done. And that's where they will then demonstrate a piece of software. For instance, in our portal, in our, our portal, we did not have uh, um, assignment uh, functionalities before. But because our users, based on our feedback, we decided to add this feature. And when we developed that feature and added the, the feature and it's working, then we invited stakeholders to demonstrate how this feature works. And then the feature works very well. And then we deploy it and we start using it. We are planning to develop other features within this our uh, platform we are using, our cost portal. So we continue to develop more features. After developing the, the other feature, we test it and it's working. We develop another feature. Another feature we are planning to develop now is a library. Library where we upload a lot of documents, uh, a lot of um, text, uh, e-textbooks where our students can browse the library, 
look for templates, look for textbooks. This is a feature. Another feature we are looking at adding is work in um, is a, a shop, online shop, integrated online shop, where our student can shop um, some textbook and a lot of things. So this is how you use a screw to keep on improving on your product, adding one feature, one after the other. You don't wait till you develop everything before you start using your product or you start deploying your, your, um, your product, like what is obtainable in a waterfall. In waterfall, waterfall, the method is that they have to uh, develop a full product before it can be used. But in Scrum, Agile Scrum, you, you keep on developing um, your product features by feature. You keep on adding smaller, smaller, smaller features. And before you know it, you have all the features you want. And again, you don't develop just features. You develop features based on your collaboration with the end users. The, from their feedback, you look at customers. What are they saying about the feature? And what problems are have they are they are having using the platform? We determine the next feature to develop to solve that particular problem. And Scrum is the best uh, framework to do that. So after you have um, done your sprint demo, where you invite your stakeholders and then do your review, you can see that is here. Sprint review with the stakeholder. Then the next thing is then you come as a team. All of you will come back together in what we call the sprint re retrospective. Retrospective here means you people come as a team to look at what you people have been doing, look at what challenges you people have been having as a team, and then how to improve as a team. Is it a communication challenge? People are not communicating very well. Whichever challenge then you improve as a team, address the issue then before going back to develop another feature. So that is how Scrum work. And most of the time, or the, even the job adverts, most of them are centering around Scrum. So we are going to do a lot with Scrum where we are even going to use um, Jira, to look at it, um, even Kanban to look at how to work with the, the Scrum. So Scrum is very is a very big framework, and uh, the importance continues to grow. Companies continue to adopt it because it's very very powerful because it reflects on customers. It's helped to address the customers' need. This is one of the, the framework Apple used to get where they are today. And that's what they use to outwit Nokia. Because Nokia has been using um, uh, waterfall. So any Nokia problem, they tend to develop a full product before they go to the market. But when Apple comes in, Apple adopted Scrum and once they develop uh, a piece of product, they will look at what the customer is saying, and then they will develop um, maybe iPhone one. Then they look at what the customer is saying, then they will improve on that. I add like one or two features in I iPhone one. They call it iPhone two. They add one or few features on iPhone two, and then they call it iPhone three. And that is how they keep on doing it till we have like iPhone 10, 13, and the rest of them now. And it, it, it gives them the market. And the success of Apple made so many other companies to start adopting Scrum. And most of the company, even Facebook, they have, they have adopted um, Scrum. And that's why you see when Facebook started, Facebook was very, very sketchy in terms of uh, features. But over time, they keep on adding features. They keep on adding features. And when you come to Facebook now, you can see how rich Facebook is. They didn't start, they keep on adding features and they didn't develop everything overnight. So is uh, this uh, Scrum that they've been using. 
So all this is just to tell you how powerful this Chrome is. We are going to look, um, like I said, we are going to spend most of our time in this Chrome. But if you have any question at this point, we can take it. Okay. The next technique we are going to look is a uh, Kanban. Kanban is a project management tool that allows you to get a more visual overview of the tasks that either um, need to get done or are completed. It consists of three columns. The columns here is um, to do, in progress, and uh, done. That is how Kanban works. So it's more of um, showing our work, our activities, our deliverable in a, a very clear visual uh, representation. So that once you look at um, the Kanban board, you will see what is happening. You will see who is doing who, who, who the stage they are, and um, you understand what's going on in the, in the project. And uh, there are so many softwares that you can use a uh, Kanban. So many project management uh, softwares these days are beginning to adopt Kanban in their project management. Like um, Jira, what we are seeing here is uh, from uh, Jira. Uh, another, another software that uh, is uh, well known for Kanban is uh, Trello. Uh, Monday.com as well, they, they make good use of Kanban. Um, Asana, they make good use of Kanban as well. So this is how Kanban look. You can see here is a to do. To do are uh, backlogs, what need to be done. So from here, you select what you need to, to, to do. These are user stories that are waiting to be uh, decomposed. And once you pick a user story from this to-do list, you bring it to in progress. It means that the, the user story has actually started. A developer will pick it from here and bring it here and start working on it. And after working on it, within this in progress, you will test um the user story you are working on and when done you move it from in progress to done and then you know that you've completed this particular task that's how you be moving from to do to in progress and um, to done this um jira have uh, the, the the capacity to create additional visual board like here you can create another board here called a test so so that you can move it from to do to in progress and from in progress to testing from testing to done so it's a very flexible uh, functionalities in the project management uh, uh, tools or softwares so that is um all about a uh, Kanban. So when we start um, looking at our tools, we're going into details on how to use uh, all these Kanbans in uh, Jira because we are going to make use of Jira. You need to understand how to use Jira very well because uh, in order to deliver effective uh, Scrum, we have to use Jira. 
JIRA is a tool, and not a method or not um, a technique, it's a tool. So um, this is um, a digital board. Now you can equally do your Kanban, not only in digital form, you can equally do your Kanban in an analog way. And this is how you can uh, do your Kanban in an analog way. So you can even um, cut uh, a, 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 a sheet of paper or, or sticker paper, use it to do your Kanban. So it must not be in a digital in a digital board like this. So you can equally do your Kanban manually or analog using analog method. So actually it started from analog method and then is now digitalized. So you can see, you can write in a sheet of paper and stick it on the, on the, on the board. Write all the things you need to do and stick them. So you can, from here, you remove this sticker and place it here. When you finish here, you remove this stick and place it, and that's how it uh, originated. But over time, uh, during um, using a continuous improvement has been digitalized. And the digital board is now what everybody is using. But that doesn't mean that um, that is the only way to use Kanban. This is not the only way to use Kanban. Even if you want now, you can still be using it like this as long as uh, you are understanding what you are doing. So that is um, what we have for um, our project um, management techniques. So if you have question, you can come up with your question. Do we have any question? Okay. So, So what we are, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to search for project labor to see um, if you can see it. I think I have um, one installed in my system. Let's uh, look for project labor, and uh, so that's what we are going to use to create uh, this uh, critical parts method. So this is um, the site where if you type projectlabor.com, it will bring you here. 
this is where you are going to uh, download project labor so and to download it you have uh, uh, over six million download in uh, 193 countries all over the world so that's how important uh, this project labor is so let's just watch the demo of this project labor so this is uh, how project labor is this is a demo of project labor from um, um, their youtube page So when you install Project Labor in your laptop, in your, in your system, that is how it's going to be looking like. And that is how, this is where we'll be creating your activities, duration, As you can see here, using Project Labor now, they are creating, um, these are the tasks. And as they are creating the tasks, you can see the Gantt chart is equally showing. And uh, here is where you can um, add your resources. And see here the activities, duration, the gun charts um, showing the visual representation. So, so this is um, how project labor is. It's very simple. And um, when you start, you need to watch this uh, YouTube video. I will do it myself, but I, it's an assignment I'm giving to you people to do a bit of exploration before we do it together. So I want you people to do it before we do it. That's why I'm showing you all this and where to. But within the document I'm going to use for the, I send to you as an assignment, is going to be, all these things are going to be, I'm going to explain to you what you need to do. And we are even here, you need to come and um, download the, the software. So you need to download it and keep it. You need to, as long as you are a project manager, it's very, very important you have it can use it to be even doing a small, small personal project in order to learn how it um, works very well. It's very beautiful project um, management software. It, this uh, pro, this uh, software is a very big blow to Microsoft because they copied everything uh, Microsoft uh, uh, got in a Microsoft project and it's free of charge. They are not, they are not charging you a dime. So that is the beauty. So that is it um, for tonight. And if you still have any question, you can ask your, add, um, ask your question before we close. But once we close, I will then process this um, assignment and uh, send it to you. So you guys start working on both of them. So 
So once you type progenlabor.com, it bring you to this page and you download it from here. So you download it from here. Yeah, from here. You bring uh, this page, source force. Once you bring the dump, because um, you cannot download it directly from this uh, project, labor.com. It's going to uh, bring up, bring you to another this uh, page, um, source forge, where you download it. And this is uh, where you can download it to your. Uh, onto your laptop or onto your computer. You see, preparing to get to download. So you can see it's downloading on my system now. You can see it here, downloading. I'm waiting for it to finish downloading. Yeah. So it's finished. So you double click here to launch it. Say yes. That's it. Install. Yeah, install. And that's it. That's it. I've got Puja Labor on my DC. You see, very easy to, to download. It's very easy to download um to download and start using it. And then you close, and that's it. So once you close it, it will ask you to create a new project, open a new. If you have any a new project, you can, but you don't have any project, so you need to uh, create a new project. And you add the project name here, call it demo project. Project manager, say Charles. And start time today, we are starting today. And that's it. And then I click. Okay, and that is it. I've got my my project environment set. So, what do I do? I think I have to say initiate. Let me do initiate initiate. Then the next is um, define. The next execute. The next close closure. So you can see I've started creating my my project plan or my critical uh, uh, part 
uh, analysis. I've, now this is my project plan. After creating my project plan, is equally work breakdown, breaking my, my work down. It's equally a work breakdown structure. So you see the duration here, you can change the duration. I can say this, change the duration to 20 days, or let me say uh, seven days. Can see it's now showing in Gantt chart that is seven days from here. Okay, I can say this one um, nine days. <laughs> you can see here nine days. It's now showing in a Gantt chart. So that's how to to use project labor to create your project plan or your, do your work breakdown structure or, or create your critical parts. So this is where I'm going to leave you people for now. I'm not going to go into detail because I've given you is an assignment. I want you people to, to figure it out yourself. I, do, I don't want to create everything. Just uh, I'll create a video watch it then if you are after the assignment then we'll come and do a session where we do correction where we have an but this is just to show you people um how to go about uh, downloading it installing it in your system and seeing that it's not so difficult to to work on so any question Am I with you guys or are you guys sleeping? No, we're here, sir. Okay. Just I'm not hearing from any of you. So it means I'm a, I'm a very wonderful teacher. So every you guys are. <laughs> you know, it's when we start taking the tasks or like start meeting challenges and start. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. A thousand like, and one question. Yes, like now when you start, uh, um, uh, you some of you use a uh, lucid chart to create the work breakdown structure, and now you use this uh, project labor to create your critical part and the project plan. Then, then you start seeing the start feeling the actual effects of being a project manager. That's where we are we are heading to. So I will bring this session to an end. And uh, I wish you a good night's rest. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you.